Hey everybody, you're watching Cole the Corn Star. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're a return viewer, welcome back. We're gonna be heading down to the striped field, AKA the field west of dad's, and we're gonna be harvesting soybeans. But before we can do that, we need to unload this semi. It's a big step. Turn that air conditioning on. Oh, I like this semi. It's had the same smell in it for my entire life. I have no idea how it does it, but I like the smell. We're stuck. Nothing a little diff lock can't take care of. Look at that, four wheel drive. We're gonna do the old little hoppy outy and looky quick because our trailers are like 40 years old and they sit extremely low to the ground. This drive over thing is supposed to be, you just drive a semi across it, no problem at all. But with these old trailers sitting so low to the ground, we had to build this little rock ramp right here. But I just wanted to make sure that this one was gonna fit because this is our lowest old trailer. Whoa, right there. Holy smokes, it's like I've done this before. They designed this like for my dad, straight up. Engineers at Batco, good job. When my grandpa was alive, he would always leave the windows down in every semi. He'd always leave the door open in all the tractors, no matter how much dust was going around. So in memory of him, I just had to shut that window. Vroom. Pretty smooth start. We got the 13,000 bushel band that is completely full of soybeans. And then we're moved over to the 32,000 bushel now. Maverick, Maverick, did you want to say good morning to everybody? Do you want to say good morning? <laughs> The striped field, aka the field west of dad's, is now done. They got the terraces done, they got the back hills done. This is a good field. I got some good memories in here, especially right here in the ditch. When I was a little boy, it's gonna come right with dad in the four wheel drive tractor. Mom rolls up on the road with her van. Dad comes pulling up right here with the tractor, drives it down into the ditch. So I get out of the van, skedaddle over into the tractor, climb up in there. Dad goes to back out, sinks it right to the belly in the ditch. Safe to say he's never made that mistake again, but to this day, that was like 18 years ago, if you burn the grass in this ditch off, you can still see the imprints where the tires were. Cooper said there's no reason we shouldn't finish this field today. Every time he says that, we don't finish the field, but today is the exception. This is dad's house, which is right over there. So right across the creek, we have the Hanson farm. This farm's kind of unique because it's an entire mile long. From right where we are to this waterway, this rectangle right here, this is all program acres. This back part and the tip of this shark fin, not program acres. So we're gonna see if there's a difference. seen any rock at all we always start out the fields by outlining everything our fields we go two laps all the way around that way we have plenty of room to turn the combine around when we get to the end we got all the outlining done now so now we're going back and forth we're on this little spot that's got some rocks in it so we got the head tipped back so hopefully we don't pick one up once we go over there no rocks behind me no rocks right here there's some rocks. We gotta be keeping our eyes peeled. We gotta be sharp in this area. We did not find a rock. We got Cooper over there mowing down the sides of the ditches. Boom! He's gonna eat that tree. Look at that. Wow. Hopefully he turns that thing off. Ah. Yeah. 
It's like my feeder house is not taking it away as fast as this is forcing it into now. So it just builds up there and then stuff gets wrapped around that drum and then it sends my slip clutch off. Where's my bean head at? Hmm? Oh, there it is. Oh man. I think that the belt in the center part is a little loose because if I go above four mile an hour, it just feels like it sits there and spins and squeals on me. I think that's what's been plugging us up. Where do you kind of, I mean, you pull there. We're reading some online forums. It sounds like we're not the only ones who've had this problem. I found a few from like 2012, 2016 that give the exact same symptoms we have. Sounds like there's a pressure relief valve. We're trying to find it. It's just a little Allen screw that you tighten up about a quarter turn. It's somewhere where Cooper's at. These things have manuals, but oftentimes they say contact your dealer. That's not very helpful at eight o'clock at night. Because this line coming in is the same. This one here is the same. This. Does it say pop out this, or does it say pop out this whole thing? Uh, no, you tighten the Allen screw about a quarter turn. Tighten it? Yeah, clockwise. Eric, what are you doing in the toolbox? Hmm? You're not a tool. Here, You're not a wrench. Yields on this farm have been a lot more all over the board. I've seen it as low as low 40s and as high as 68. So I'm not sure what's causing that in this farm. I have not hit a lot of program acres yet, so I'm going to be kind of interested to see what the difference is on this one. Because this is a little bit lower yielding, so if we still get 10 bushels on the program stuff, at least we know those applications paid for themselves. The Hanson farm done. That center belt thing was giving me fits at the end, and like the last two acres, it started slipping another three times. So I don't know what's going on there. The dew is starting to set in kind of heavy right now. The last pods were getting real hard to crack open. We just wanted to get done because we we're talking rain in like three hours. So we got her done. Looking at the map, you can tell exactly what I had as program acres. This front part was all program, and then all the way to right where that green stops. That was all program right here. It was a good day. Uh, 130 acres, maybe? Super trucker coal. Oh, that was a bump. Who we'll put that there? Oh, jeez. I slept in until about 9. We got a little rain last night. Look at the yard. She's coming in. Got some greening up behind us. I don't know why there's random spots that don't have anything growing in them. So I'm just gonna keep force feeding water on them. Hopefully something grows. I can always put more grass seed on them next spring or I could winter seed it if I need to, I suppose. But hopefully this gets as thick as possible before we get a frost because otherwise my yard's gonna look pretty bare for a while. You got enough rain, it's gonna be too wet to be out in the field. We're, it, they don't take long to dry down, but they're kind of like a big sponge. So we'll probably be running tomorrow again. And actually not a bad day for a rain day because I got some tax stuff I gotta get taken care of. It's looking a little wet yet today. We got a lot of dew last night. So depending what the wind does, what the sun does, we may get in the field yet this afternoon, we may not. Which is okay, because Jamie and Nate are coming out in just a few minutes. We gotta order seed, chemicals, fertilizer. Hey, home. hey we're home. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Good. I actually just got here, so. Hey, Jeff. Yeah, a few yeah. minutes down. You know, we've only got a couple hundred acres of soybeans out and none of our corn. We're already ordering our seed for next year. So Jamie and Nate came today. We ordered half of our seed. We ordered all of our 32% in thiosol, so all of our liquid fertilizer for next year, and then all of our P and K, all of our dry fertilizer for next year. Price-wise, last year it was all-time high. Our 32% was $460 a ton. This year, it's $590 a ton. Last year, our P and K were like six and $700 per ton. This year, they're like $710 and $910 per ton. So for all that stuff, $522,000. It's a little wet in the field yet, 
We're gonna go visit Grandma Judy on this beautiful day. Then we might see if Uncle Orlin wants to go out for some supper. You're only an hour late. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, the last two dozen I threw out, so I thought I'd fix a dozen eggs. Uh, not a dozen, but four. What's the matter? Four is not a dozen. No, I know. I'm not thinking clearly. Did I tell you I'm shrinking? <laughs> Did I tell you I'm shrinking? I'm five foot four and a half. I always wanted to be five foot two, so I might get there. I might get there. You know, one thing about when you're five foot two and you're old, you won't be able to do this. People look at you and say, oh, isn't she stunning? They look at me, isn't she the sweetest little old lady you've ever seen? <laughs> because you can get by with stuff. Mm -hmm. I can say anything. Because no one can see you because you're so short. I never thought about that. <laughs> Paul, I didn't realize they were talking rain the other night. Cole shut the bin lid, which was probably the right thing to do. But when I come in today, I looked up. It looked like the auger was in the hole. I didn't even think about it. I unloaded almost two semis. I thought I'd walk back, climb the ladder, check the bin. When I got back there, beans are on the ground. I'm like, oh crap. My fault, my fault. Called Cooper, said, can you come over and help me right away, buddy? I never thought about it in a million years looking up there to check it out. You always hate it when you get a hiccup in the road. Have to stop, clean up a mess like this, but teamwork, we got it done. Looks good. Hopefully it's the last mess like this this year, but uh, I'm not holding my breath. Not holding my breath. 